No, really, I'm sick. I've been sick this past week. I look like somebody's grandma right now. I'm at the tail end of a cough that I originally thought was strep throat, but my doctor was like, no, no, this is just a cough. Merry Christmas. And it, it came at a perfect time. The thick of it was last week when all hell kind of broke loose on me just to kind of tidy up the end of the year for me and to really test my limits. We started things off really strong Monday night with my car almost getting stolen. It just happened. Oh my gosh, are you serious? <gasps> I had nothing in the car. Luckily it was a car rental and I'm still trying to figure out like the insurance stuff, getting like camera footage, which was crazy to watch and getting all the logistics done. But y'all, when I came out to check on my car, I was just in disbelief and shock that it even happened because I had parked in a really well-lit area. It wasn't some dingy alley. There were other cars parked around me, nicer cars than mine. So once all the shock went away, I was like, wait a minute. Why didn't they try to get any other car? I didn't have anything valuable visible. What they did was they cracked through the back left no, the back right passenger seat, unlocked the car, ransacked it, I had nothing. The ignition was fucked up. And so after I took all the pictures and I recorded and everything, I went upstairs, I immediately looked up car theft. And then what do you know? The first search is a video posted three hours before this happened on a general news platform. And they said, Kias and Hyundais are the most prone to car theft due to a TikTok video blowing up last year. I feel like we live in some sort of dystopia we do in many ways but it feels like we're getting so much closer to black mirror i remember in the thick of this and i was trying to figure it out i was calling everybody making all the right reports and i was just sitting there i was sitting on the corner of my bed trying to feel sorry for myself like trying to you know get into that victim mentality that i used to identify so much with it's so easy to be like why me of course it would be me i'm prone to bad luck bad things happen to me it's just the way it is too many good things were happening this year so let's make it make sense with something really bad happening crazy enough that narrative didn't take over i remember i was like why am i not crying why am i not catastrophizing this situation but i really just learned to self-soothe and figure things out one step at a time and that's what i did i just sat there and troubleshooted troubleshot troubleshoot it troubleshoot the situation it's just something that happened and has passed and now we're moving past it <coughs> i feel like i need to make the ultimate anti-inflammatory antioxidant anti-negative energy soup today we're gonna call it the supinator 3000 <laughs> I'm flipping last week's shitty week on its head. I feel very indifferent. No, I guess that's not the right word. I felt stuff. I definitely felt very what the fuck last week and confused. But I have a good feeling about this week. It's Sunday. I'm feeling a lot better. So if you're sick, remember to take care of yourself. I'm sending you some ginger. I'm throwing ginger at your face right now. Cheers to that. Um, now where do I begin? Quickly, slice easily, grate safely. Sold. Of course, I have to buy a rotisserie chicken. I'm just making a bowl for my little visitor right now. Oh, he smells a chicken. I'm about to make you a little bowl, okay? Hi, lovers and friends. I just need to taste test the chicken, make sure it's all good. My sister and I used to eat this for dinner with some ketchup. It's a perfect little dinner. I'm making the dog I sit a bowl for lunch and I have to really mince up the meat because he has no teeth left. I think I've mentioned it a few times. He's the kind of dog though that will eat anything. You can bribe him with food. I taught him a few tricks after his owner said he's not gonna learn any tricks, but 
We were wrong. He learned how to roll over, lay down, and spin. This is the extent of my motherhood so far. In my early teenage years, I always thought I'd be a mother by like 23, 24, which by now I'm like, what the was I thinking? Who put that in my head? But I'm not gonna lie, whenever I do see a little tiny infant human being with their tiny little feet and tiny little arms, I do melt. That's where I am right now. Not that anybody asked. Just thoughts while cutting rotisserie chicken for a dog that I dog sit. Hey, I haven't coughed like within the last five minutes. That's a good sign. Good boy. Stay. Wait. Stay. Okay. I'm just dipping it in some salt and pepper right now. So delicious. You want some more? Bro, you eat so fast. I don't know how you don't choke. You literally inhale your food. It's been about one and a half minutes and you finish that entire bowl. tempted to put tahine on this a little won't hurt right still a little bit don't tell anybody probably shouldn't be eating this while my throat is healing let's see what it does this is an experiment don't try this at home if you're sick mm. let's get a little bit more on there mm. it doesn't irritate my throat now i don't know the logistics of eating tahin while sick. Maybe I'm setting a bad example. It was so good. I can see myself like coughing a little extra from how tangy it is. Just eat it slowly, just enjoy it. No choking here, unless it's in bed. So lovely, good little afternoon snack. This day is going by so fast, you guys. I've just been worrying about getting everything done by tomorrow night when my mom lands here. There's like four boxes of things that I need to build out, including a mini kitchen island that I bought at Ikea two weeks ago. I wonder if I should ask my task rabbit to help me with that tomorrow to save time. They're coming to help me mount up my coffee bar shelving. But I want to see how long that takes. I'm telling you guys, everything takes time. It's been almost, almost a year of me living here. I'm still like switching stuff around as I please. And honestly, I do it so much because I really enjoy designing my space and constantly seeing what I can do with it. I'm really grateful for having a lofted space where I can play with the layout so much. <laughs> little guy pooped in my house earlier today and I stepped in it and it's okay. It's okay baby. He is an anxious dog. He's a rescue. So yeah, I know. I deal with anxiety too. The anxiety just creeps up sometimes, especially because of the things that happened this week. And also with my family coming to visit me, I'm just putting a lot of pressure on myself to make sure that everyone has a good time. I've been trying to steadily take care of myself, but also balance like the workload and <coughs> that that normally when shit hits the fan like this i would have trouble sleeping and lately i've been implementing meditation before sleeping specifically with the aura app i believe the app now has over like 30,000 five star reviews and i totally can see why i've been using them to help with my sleep for a minute now and then due to traveling and stuff like that i became a lot more inconsistent with it when everything went down i was like okay i need to buckle down and do something before laying down for bed one of my favorite things about the app is that they they have these master classes that some really inspiring people have hosted like Ashley Green from Twilight she talks about some very vulnerable things and it's just so comforting if I could describe the Aura app it literally feels like Spotify but for the mind for the soul in their sleep section as you can see here it is full of everything that you might need to fall asleep there's meditation of course hypnosis if you're into that it's like CBT for me different sounds sometimes 
rainfall works really well for me there's story time i've recently really started like hearing somebody tell me a story there are things that can be thought provoking if you need that if you need a little bit of deeper connection with yourself at night time but it's really become one of those apps that i can hop on before bed if i'm feeling anxious if i'm feeling like yeah if i lay down right now there's no way that i'm gonna fall asleep or at least have a good sleep and they have this one meditation on there it's called the deep sleep system relaxation i believe the library is so chock full of things once my brain gets used to one kind of meditation meditation or mantra and like kind of starts writing it off I can switch to something else and they'll have something ready I also love that they host live sessions and it really just feels like one big community but if this sounds like you too where you're having trouble sleeping trouble resting the mind a bit you can get started on your journey too for completely free on Aura's website and I'll have my link down below the first 500 people who click on my link will get a free trial and 25% off thanks to Aura for sponsoring this portion of the video thank you for helping me with my sleep I've been sleeping like this guy this past week in spite of everything that happened because of a little nighttime meditation and playing some soundscapes it does wonder sometimes the silence just drives me crazy my thoughts and worries about like what i can do about this what i can do to prevent this tomorrow what i need to do tomorrow it's just restless <sighs> we just gotta all take care of ourselves not all of us have somebody to pick up their poop and feed them we need to start cooking <laughs> i'm so tired of cook you guys <coughs> Does the apron look weird with the hoodie on? Honestly, I think I'm just gonna put on some good music. Zone out and cook with you guys, okay? Enjoy the show. to the ginger and remember the new contraption I bought? Let's put them to the test. I hate peeling ginger so much. If you don't have this, you can also use a spoon. Do I use like this much ginger? Do I use this side or how do I? Oh, use this edge to kind of scrape it all off. I think. <laughs> I feel like this is not right. This is how you do it with a spoon. And I quite frankly think this is easier. See, the spoon gets into like the crevices as well. Okay, this sucks. I'm confirming that this sucks, or I just don't know how to use it. Ah, that's $8.99, I'll never see again. What else can I use with this? Drop your ideas below. I guess I have two new kitchen tools today. I'm kind of scared to use this, but it's a multi-purpose immersion hand blender. Two-speed option, detachable shaft. So I need to puree everything in here with this. I really hope this blazing hot soup doesn't splash everywhere. Let's read the instructions on this one. I feel like it shouldn't be too hard. We can make smoothies with this. You can do so much, not just soup. This just goes on top. Whoa. Is this first setting? Second setting? Dang! That's powerful. Here's the hot soup. Oh my gosh. If this splatters up at me, RIP. Here goes nothing. Just gonna make sure it's submerged. Oh. Actually, I should probably lean it away from me. It's actually blending stuff, it's so cool. I might go ahead and pour some water in it so that it's deeper because a lot of the water evaporated. Okay, that should be good. It sucks you in as you go. So I have to be careful to not let it scrape the bottom of my pot. Would it scrape? No, I guess it wouldn't. Now I'm gonna put it back on the stove for a little bit 
taste it, add anything else I want, like more salt and pepper, maybe some fish sauce. I need to scope the field and see if fish sauce would be appropriate for this occasion. I do need to add apple cider vinegar, just a little bit, to add some complexity to the flavors. Okay, back to the stove we go. It's finally time. I'm so hungry, so I'm just I'm gonna cut to the chase. The hand blender was so good. Everything is all pureed. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to make tomato soup, like a tomato bisque. I've always wanted to make tomato soup, but the process of having to pour in hot soup into a blender just is such a turn off. But now that I have that guy, a little hand blender. I have a little bit of organic coconut cream, and I'm just gonna drizzle like a spoon of it over, or maybe two. I make this artisanal. I guess the more abstract, the better, right? The more abstract, the more expensive. And then finally, I'm gonna top it off with some organic pumpkin seeds. This looks so good. Oh my gosh, I'm salivating so hard right now. Self-care. If this isn't self-care, I don't know what is. <coughs> The coconut cream with this people say it's optional but i really think it's what makes the dish so much more comforting i mean you already have such a hard kick with the spices which is the ginger it's doing a lot of the work with your healing but the coconut cream just kind of wraps its arm around you and tells you that everything is going to be okay it's okay for the spice to hurt a little the coconut cream is here it's going to soothe everything and it makes this nice little balance you know my With the pumpkin seeds this is exactly what i needed you guys this was so easy to make soups are actually so easy to make why did it seem so daunting to me i used to think soups were only for grandmas who have been cooking for decades and know what they're doing but soups are very easy oh yeah and i did end up adding the fish sauce for me, I think it made the dish so much more familiar to me and more complete for my palate, so to each their own. Mm. The texture of chewing on the pumpkin seeds. Delicioso. Is this Italian? I'm not sure. In Vietnamese, you would say ngong wa, which is so good. Mm. I'm feeling pretty accomplished right now. I really did not want to do shit today, you guys. But overall, it was a good day. I'm gonna enjoy this soup, FaceTime a friend, and I will see you guys tomorrow. to do the sheets. Hey. <laughs> Good morning. I know it's cozy. Come on. This morning I woke up and decided to be a badass. I'm getting my annual physical today. Blood work and all. Shout out to all my baddies. Y'all know who you are. That's you. See you at the doctor's office. Pap smear done. My badge of honor and now i get to go eat good day good morning you guys it's a new day and i'm feeling 100 plus mucinex little ginger and resting last night i knocked out i kid you not 9 30 p.m but it felt so late my body was just so tired and ready to give out and i woke up around 4 a.m in sweat i was covered in sweat but i feel like it was that sweat session that really cured me i just sweated out all the toxins the task rabbit's here and you guys he has five star reviews 5.0 758 reviews and he's done over 1300 jobs that's amazing here's a little update look how beautiful these unfinished oak shelves are 
I'm so glad I got unfinished. Taking a little break to eat because my friend brought me banh mi. Ooh, which one's this one? I never had this one. I think this is Thit Nung. I really should air fry this so that it's crispy again. It's been a minute, but I'm so hungry. Mm. I totally forgot about the veggies. I was like, just kind of missing something. I'm gonna have my cilantro. I love cilantro. It's one of those herbs that I can I can eat by the handful. That looks more like it. My mom's not gonna be here until 10.30. She just texted me that she's on the plane. So I have a few hours and I really wanna get in my letter writing. I had gone to Daiso a couple days ago and I wanted to show you guys the haul. Okay, let's see what I got to soothe myself. <laughs> I think I just went in and I was like, okay, I'm gonna spend 15 bucks on the cutest I have these sushi stickers, how cute. Oh, I'm gonna use that in the letters. <laughs> this character is me. What is this character, a peach? I got envelopes, I got some plates. These are the banchan plates that I am so in love with. Got two of those and they stack so perfectly. I got myself a little Sanrio pill case. How can you forget your supplements when your pill case is this cute? I got Sanrio fancy zip bags. Probably gonna send my friends stuff in this because I don't know what else I'd use this for. Ooh, I got a bag hanger. I saw my friend Celine whip this out when we went to go get coffee. I've always seen these, but I've never seen somebody actually use it. And I saw the ease of using it. She just had her bag hanging right next to her. And I was like, that's on the list. That's on the list. That's going to be what's in my bag. I got me a Batsmaru coin case. And I think my excuse for buying this was to hold my bobby pins and small elastics in when I travel. Wool blend socks in gray. And I got hand warmers that are gray. So cute. I love that they're sleeves instead of just gloves. I think the first letter I'm gonna write tonight is actually gonna be to my sister. with a note, end of the year note, if you will. But honestly, whenever you're watching this, whether it be the beginning of the month, beginning of a week, end of a week, end of a month, whatever it is, everyone's setting their goals, making New Year's resolutions, everyone's making vision boards left and right, and I'm not knocking that at all. I myself am an avid vision boarder, but not vision hoarder, okay? There's a difference. This coming year, I really wanna focus on just three things. Planning is the easy part. It's the exciting part that gets our dopamine rushing, aka what makes us feel inspired and excited. But before approaching that process, I really, really recommend you to sit down with just yourself and honestly identify one or two or three core values of yours. These are gonna be your core principles that you'd like to continue to embody or start embodying this year. The hack is, is that they're really simple yet effective. Because what's a running joke about resolutions? They finish the minute February 1st hits, right? People start to get in their heads and discouraged and comfortable once that very specific goal starts to hit obstacles. But when you're able to clarify your core values first, you'll have your core values to fall back on. And in my experience, the only way that you can honestly do this is by taking a few moments away from outside influence. So I wouldn't do this if you were just freshly scrolling on social media or you just came back from a huge gathering of people and hearing different thoughts bounce around. It seems counterintuitive because you're like, wait, but that's that's like inspiration. It's giving me ideas. But like Rick Rubin said, it's in your own stillness that you're able to see clearly what you truly want. So maybe do this in a morning where you just woke up and your mind is the freshest. It is the most untouched and you can jot down just two or three things that you really think align with you. When I first started doing this, I had a really hard hard time narrowing down to just like three things. So the trick is jot down 10, 20 things if you have to. Once you have this huge list, start going in with that process of elimination. This is gonna help you with decision making. Your core values that you come up with will always be with you. These are just things that naturally feel right to you. Just because it's something that you're not gonna fully focus on this coming year doesn't mean that it's not you. Once you have these core principles or intentions, then you can begin the process of mapping out the year. I found that in the past, it's really easy to overestimate what we think we can do in a 
year, but underestimate what we can do in five years. What's really gonna help us create that longevity mindset are these core values. I really used to make goals out of everybody else's perceived happiness, and although it's tempting to grab onto somebody else's, again, perceived happiness, it really is a facade in a way because we don't know if they truly feel fulfilled, we don't know their full journey, and I just found that my goals were basically made on a very weak foundation because I didn't clarify who I am. I just clarified what I wanted to do. When the journey gets a little rocky, it just feels like you have something so sturdy to cling on because no one can take these core values away from you. Within this year, who knows, you can go broke, you can lose a job that you've been working so hard for, you can fail out of school, all of these things which have happened to me before. It's gonna feel very shitty if you don't remind yourself of who you are inside. What genuine things inside of you that drive your everyday actions. By the way, a few examples for core values in case it just feels too broad. It could be courage, it could be forgiveness, equanimity, caring, cleanliness. Okay, with that said, I'm so excited for what this year holds for us and I'm wishing everybody a happy new year. Let me know what you guys are doing in the comments. Ooh, comment a sparkle emoji if you made it this far. Only the real ones really make it this far. I love y'all so much. Thank you for this year of resonating with the shit that I say on here, building out this community. I'm so, so grateful. Let's make this year an amazing addition to the story of our lives. I hope that takes off pressure for it to be perfect. That's me telling me. It's just gonna be a, a part of the plot again. That's, that's the mindset, okay? I'm gonna try different things. I'm here for the ride. I'm here for the ride, not the outcome. And that's a mantra that I'm gonna have to keep repeating to myself because I grew up thinking that I could only be happy when something happens. I'll be happy when I reach this amount of stability. I'll be happy when I have X amount of friends. I'll be happy when I have a lover. I'll be happy when. 2023 has showed me the beauty of being happy in the moment of what is in front of me. And honestly, it's been the most fulfilling, despite the fact that I've given up a lot of what I used to know. Don't forget to stay curious and stay grounded, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.